when the steam engines uh, began pulling rail cars, uh, the West was still a very untamed place. And then the steam engine really is a it's, a, it's an impressive piece of machinery. It was rather un, unrefined. It spews smoke and it, it's, it's a bit of a, a, a raw machine in itself. And, and, and it really complemented the West in that it, it was rough and, and it, was, it was new and it was really pioneering a new way of travel. And it, it sort of fit the landscape. It was a raw, untamed landscape. And these engines were, you know, they're beautiful and they're spectacular, but they're, they're pretty raw and and um, unsophisticated, if you will. The, the West is not very often subtle. It's very uh, in your face and, and it deals you a, a blow if you're not prepared for it. And steam engines can kind of be the same way, but you know, in coming out West, you're talking about vast distances that have to be crossed. And of course, the steam locomotive enabled that. The train glamorized the West through fancy brochures and did a lot of marketing. Although the West really didn't need to be pumped up, they felt it needed to be a little bit glamorized. Painters and artists and photographers were starting to send their works back East, uh, publicizing this fantastic land uh, and the Grand Canyon in particular. The romance is in railroading for a lot of people. The steam locomotive is a very visual machine. You know, if you like machinery, if you like things that move, all of the stuff that makes the steam locomotive go up and down a railroad, you can see happening just standing there watching the side of the thing. It's huffing, it's puffing, it's hissing, the wheels are going around, the pistons are pushing, and, and everything is very uh, obviously working together, and it's huge, and it's heavy, and it's, it's just a very impressive uh, piece of machinery, and, and I think people marvel at how does it even work. They inspire awe in anyone who sees them and, and is lucky enough to ride behind them. Zantera Parks and Resorts is proud to be the largest provider of services inside national parks for the National Park Service in the United States. Essentially, Zantera is still the same company that was operating back when the Santa Fe Railway hired the Fred Harvey Company in 1905. Zantera purchased the Fred Harvey Company and with that came the assets of the remainder of the Fred Harvey Company, which included the South Rim of the Grand Canyon. We also place a very high value on our responsibility to protect those places. Zantara Parks and Resorts is a leader in the hospitality industry, and we weigh our decisions on the environmental impacts as a result of our operation. When Zantara purchased the Grand Canyon Railway in 2007, the steam engine was still used in the summertime. Zantera realized that this was a challenge because they aren't very fuel efficient. They do have some emissions that are harmful. They leak. Uh, they're an old piece of machinery, no matter how well you maintain them. And we maintain them very well. Why do railroads go from steam to diesel? Well, in a word, economics. By far and large, most railroads had already outdated technology by the time World War II hit. World War II, there was no materials to build new steam locomotives. Some were built, uh, and as soon as the war was over, diesel technology had come along. And the diesels were more efficient, they were less labor intensive. So with fuel efficiency, because a diesel basically out of the box is twice as efficient as a steam locomotive, and labor costs pretty much cast the death knell of the steam locomotive. We made the decision to go to a diesel train for the environmental impacts that the steam engine was having. Some of it was economical as well. By going to a diesel locomotive fleet, our environmental challenges were less significant. For instance, the diesels use less fuel than a steam locomotive. They use less water than a steam locomotive. However, we wanted to preserve the historic steam locomotive and think of inventive ways to be able to operate that without the potential environmental impacts. So we had an idea. When we discontinued the steam engine, we never, never meant to never operate it again and, and immediately started looking at some alternate fuel possibilities and we realized we serve thousands of people at the south rim of the Grand Canyon. What if we collected all of the used vegetable oil from our restaurants at the south rim and at Williams 
and used it as a fuel to run the historic steam locomotives. It was then a matter is if we could collect this vegetable oil, can the locomotive mechanics make it work in a steam locomotive application? When they first told me that they wanted to run these engines on vegetable oil, uh, honestly, I thought, yeah, this is something we need to do. Um, because if steam is going to survive, we've got to find ways to offset the old uh, turn of the century technology and get more efficiencies and, and lower environmental impact. And it's true, the vegetable oil seemed like a way to do that. The process to use this fuel begins with reliable supply. My name's Aaron. I'm uh, with a Greener Day Recycling. From the restaurants, the uh, cooks dump the oil into a couple hundred gallon container. That container gets pumped typically once a month. We pick up the uh, oil with this vacuum truck, bring it back to our shop, where we then filter it, heat it up, filter it with a centrifuge. From a centrifuge, uh, the oil we pick up is similar to this here. As you can see, the solids and water are still in that oil. The centrifuge removes the, the water and solids, and then this is the oil that we bring up to the Grand Canyon to run in this engine right here. It's pretty amazing this oil here that uh, was used to cook french fries and uh, chicken wings is now powering this locomotive behind me. This is the fourth fuel that we burned in this locomotive. It started with coal, uh, went to heavy oil, went to uh, diesel fuel, uh, low sulfur diesel fuel, and now to waste vegetable oil. Here it is, 100% vegetable oil, safe, friendly, edible. When we put it in our steam engine, it's combustible as a fuel. Uh, the vegetable oil has a lot of characteristics that are like somewhere between diesel fuel and heavy oil that we used to burn. So uh, we've been able to successfully do it so far. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to work out pretty good. All right, she's a little off food now. Let's put a look at her in the funnel. In a sense, you have a live dinosaur here, and we have the opportunity uh, to allow another generation to see a piece of their history that was a fascinating piece of their history. And uh, it's worth doing, in my opinion, to uh, you know not have to pick up a book and read, yeah, we had these, they were wonderful things, but no, there are no more. It is our job and our responsibility to protect these places that are very important to the American people. One of the things I like about Zantara and working for Zantara is they're willing to put the, the effort and the resources into making this work. Um, our heritage and our history and protecting the environment shouldn't be mutually exclusive. And I think by what they do, they prove that. Um, we can take a piece of history uh, like this steam locomotive that has such a fan base and, and a, such a following from, from little kids watching Thomas right up to the old guys that remember them running and offer them a, a steam experience, a viable steam experience by increasing the efficiency of the machine. We've applied some, some uh, more modern technologies to the locomotive that was, that was developed and by finding a fuel that's more environmentally friendly, produces less pollutants, and then by marrying those two things, the technology and the fuel, then we have a, a way to demonstrate a piece of history that doesn't damage the beautiful places. We will continue to use the diesel engines on our daily train, but it is nice to know we can roll out the steamers from time to time.